Hello students. Today we will study about non-traditional or unconventional machining techniques. So far we have studied traditional or we can say conventional now, machining, right? Let us have a quick recap of basics of machining. So basically machining is a removal of material from the base material or a workpiece and then these are the categories of the machining right the first cutting involves this is basically the conventional approach or traditional approach to cut the material by using single point cutting tool or multi point cutting tool or maybe form of abrasive wheels right which is a case of grinding so these two categories are basically that conventional or traditional approach for machining now what is a non-traditional a non-traditional machining means it is something a different approach to cut the material so in this above methods let us say these are conventional methods in which we use a cutting tools and the metal is cut by the action of friction right here in non-traditionals a different different source of energies can be used such as electrical chemical optical maybe focused beam right so this is known as a non-traditional approach for the machining so here let us have a brief comparison over traditional and non-traditional you see that primary source of energy in traditional is mechanical, right? You use a cutting tool. It comes into the contact of the workpiece and they have a certain sort of relative motions, right? In non-traditional, different, different sources. It can be any source. So here you can see these are the conventional machining techniques. These are turning operation on a lathe using a single point cutting tool having a mechanical force acting right here in grinding same thing you have multi point cutting tool in form of abrasive wheels and you have the mechanical force acting and the material gets removed this is a non traditional right a water jet a jet of water having very high velocity right is a jet a jet is nothing but the high velocity fluid so this high velocity fluid cuts the material by unconventional way now before going further into the detail of non-conventional techniques why we need non-conventional machining so here is the answer some of the materials are having excellent strength and hardness and if you want to process that material by machining sometime conventional machining may not serve the purpose so in that case non-conventional or non-traditional techniques are used then maybe workpiece is too too ductile too flexible and which is not able to cut by the cutting normal cutting or conventional cutting techniques right because we know that in conventional cuttings like turning milling drilling grinding we apply a lot of cutting force just recall the merchant circle diagram that's we studied before the mid semester so when that is a conventional machining is happening different types of cutting force cutting forces are exerted onto the workpiece right so if your workpiece is too flexible then it's not possible that the workpiece may sustain those cutting forces generated by your cutting tool so in that case the option is a non-conventional or non-traditional techniques then the third need for non-traditional techniques that is too much complex in geometry maybe internal profile or external profiles right that can be 
machined only by non-conventional. Also, one of the important thing for non-conventional machining techniques that if you want to do micro machining for smaller dimensions, right? In that case, non-conventional or non-traditional machining approach is suitable over conventional machining. Then the quality of machining, that is a surface finish. Obviously, if you are looking for a better surface finish with minimum possible tolerance, then non-conventional machining is preferred as compared to conventional. Temperature and the residual stresses, right? So when you cut the material, the temperature and the residual stresses will be involved during the machining especially in case of cutting operations by conventional machining because that is a mechanical process so in conventional machining you have a cutting tool and workpiece in direct contact a lot of frictions is generated and that leads to increase the temperature and so on residual stresses so that thing can be eliminated by non-conventional how lowering the temperature during the process and uh, by minimizing or eliminating the residual stresses. Right? And also the important thing as far as the properties are concerned. So as a manufacturing engineer, we are looking towards the property of the fabricated or manufactured component. So if I select a particular machining technique, then what is the case of the property after machining? So what with the hardness, toughness, brittleness after machining? Am I going to achieve the same set of properties as compared to the workpiece or not? So if you want to retain the mechanical properties like base material or workpiece, then non-conventional manufacturing techniques are the suitable in comparison with the conventional techniques. Why? Because non-conventional you have minimum heat generation, minimum residual stresses, right? Minimum or no cutting forces so that do not affect the mechanical properties such as hardness, toughness, brittleness, even sometimes the fatigue property, the creep behavior that can be achieved in significant, uh, not significant, but very close to the base material value. Right? So, so this is the advantage and the disadvantage of non-conventional being listed. You can have a quick lookout that the non-conventional better accuracy surface finish. Second, as I have mentioned, no direct contact of tool and workpiece, right? No need to worry about the tool wear, tool change and other things. And same thing that will influence your tool life or I can say that will enhance the tool life and uh, no metal to metal contact so the operations will be quite in nature then disadvantage obviously the cost every individual non-conventional techniques require a different setup or you can say it's like special purpose machine tool you can have complex setup obviously yes different source of energy require different sort of setup and yes skilled operator is required so it's not like that the person who can handle the turning and milling machine can handle that non-conventional machine so here you require different different skill as per the different different non-conventional machine is concerned if you're working on laser beam skill is different electron beam machining skill is different water jet, abrasive jet, ultrasonic jet, and so on. So here, 
how we can classify classify non conventional techniques so type of energy first is a based on type of energy mechanical electrical chemical so on right second by which way the material is going to cut or remove so mechanism involved that is maybe by erosion by ionic dissolutions vaporizations right maybe iron beam you have you are going to have a focused iron beam like electron beam laser beam and so on the third one is the source of the primary or immediate energy required to remove the material right so maybe pressure high current density high voltage again ionized material and so on and the fourth one is medium of transfer of energy so what will be the transfer medium that will take care the transfer of immediate energy to the tool right so maybe high velocity particles right that is the case maybe in abrasive jets maybe ultrasonic machining electrolyte medium maybe in case of electro discharge machining or electrochemical machining electron certainly in case of electron beam machining hot gases maybe the case of plasma cutting or laser cutting something so here is the list right so ultrasonic machining water jet machining and abrasive jet machining so these are basically is known as using the mechanical source of energy to cut the material then after chemical machining that only cut by using a different different chemicals without applying any force electrochemical machining and electro discharge machining so ecm and edm comes under the category of electric discharge machining right so they use uh, electricity at a different voltage ampere and they cut the material and also they use a different sort of electrolyte solution so they are con coming under the same category electrochemical machining right then high density or high energy beam machining so this is a beam machining laser beam and electron beam so they use a focused iron focused beam of respective energy in form of laser and electron and that that is one of the way to cut the material so this is the classification of non traditional machining and we are going to restrict ourselves for this special machining techniques under non traditional machining so today we will try to see the basic of ultrasonic machining with its working principle process parameters applications and benefits and limitations right so these are the points we will cover today for ultrasonic machining so ultrasonic machining i hope uh, we have performed some of the experiments on ultrasonic welding equipment in our workshop right same principle the ultrasonic machining can be used but the purpose is different whatever we did in workshop that is for welding of plastic or metallic materials so same way we can use for machining so first so first of all let us try to understand how the ultrasonic energy can be used to cut the material so in ultrasonic machining you need to generate ultrasonic waves right the ultrasonic waves are nothing but the sound waves having a frequency of more than 20 kilohertz right 
so frequency is 20 more than 20 kilohertz right then once you generate the ultrasonic waves of higher frequency then it has to be generated by using different means of source of energy maybe by mechanical electromagnetic or thermal energy but the main thing is to generate the ultrasonic waves and these ultrasonic waves will take care of your material removal rate or material removal during the machining and the benefit one of the benefit of ultrasonic waves that they can be produced in all three medium gas liquid and solid 